Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be talking about five bills you should try when you're bored. Because right now, I don't know if there's gonna be a patch. I really hope there's gonna be a patch soon, because honestly, Luna and Terrorblade and Vector and, you know, it's just not, not that fun anymore. And so basically, in order to spice up your love light, I mean your Dota gameplay, basically you're gonna be able to use these five builds in order to have a lot more fun. They're either builds I've tried myself, builds I've seen pros play, or just random pup players griefing with, and so let's get into it. But before we do, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. We post here every single day. It means the world if you could just click that like button for me. It really, really does. And everyone who works at Game Leap, there's a lot of people behind the scenes. You know, shout out Hota, shout out Tom, shout out Ivan, shout out Mikko. There's a lot more people as well. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. But before we do, remember that we do actually run a website. Believe it or not, if you click the like button, you'll eventually get 50% off on the Game Leap website. Not right now, but if you click the link down below, you can actually go check out the website. We post content there every single day that's going to help you get to the next level. Literally, I make videos on so many different topics. I just started making an Invoker course, for instance. Before that, I did a support course. And you can check these videos out over on the Game Leap website. You're going to watch them and you're going to be like, wow, speed. I wish I knew from the beginning how great this service actually is. Not just playing, but it actually is. So click the link down below. Go give it a shot and I'll see you guys there. All right, so getting into the first build is probably the most interesting one in terms of like how different it is from standard Dota, and that is Aghanim Scepter Rush on Grimstroke, but Grimstroke offlane. Grimstroke core has definitely been a thing for a minute. It's been primarily played as a mid laner. The reason being is it's really good at shoving in waves and does a bunch of damage in the early game. My problem with Grimstroke as a mid laner is how awkward it is to use inks well. You can use it on melee creeps in order to try to proc the stun, but honestly it's unreliable and if the hero has any sort of disengage or is ranged, usually you just can't really use it. And therefore, I highly prefer this hero as an off laner. And you can pair it with any of your favorite melee strength heroes, or at least aggressive ranged heroes such as Hoodwink or Maybe Lina. Lina's probably not the best, but maybe Hoodwing, because I hear it's a little bit faster. But here's the concept behind this build. What are the most popular safe laners right now? It's Agi Heroes, generally Agi Heroes, and the Illusion Agi Heroes. Terribly, Dusa, Luda. There you go. What happens if you make an Illusion of them? Well, you should ask Darkseer. It's really good. And Grimstroke's version of an Illusion is so much better. And so here's what this ability does that makes it this insane. So the illusion does 150% of their damage, right? So this illusion is just straight up insane. It, it does 150% of their damage. It's 30% faster than them, right? So it outruns most people. It's spell immune and it takes 350% damage. So it does take quite a bit of physical damage, but that's it. And you can imagine if you get a PL or a terribly that's spell immune and you click it on a support, the fight is over for them. In fact, they usually just get three shot and I'm not over exaggerating that. They literally just get three shot most of the time. And so this is the strength behind this hero. It's really good against these illusion heroes in lane. If you pair it with one of these strength heroes and you ink swell them at level two with the uh, right with the uh, ink swell plus your Q, especially level three when ink swell almost doubles in damage and stun duration, you can just kill these these squishy, right? Low HP, high armor heroes. Grimstroke doesn't care. Right? So he's a pretty good laner against them, and he counters them in the mid to late game. So I really do feel like this hero is a good answer. The only thing I will say is if you do pick it, I want to say that you should generally pick a mid laner such as Dragonite or Tiny or something that can go in first, because even with a position 4 that can initiate first, it often isn't enough. Grimstroke is really awkward to play around. That's kind of the biggest problem with this hero. So I often recommend that you have at least two heroes that can play around Inkswell and initiate so that you can get off good soul binds or at least get off a good dark portrait. Next up on the list is probably my favorite mid laner of the patch. And I know this sounds weird and it's not even that popular, but I actually believe this hero has an insane amount of potential. I actually genuinely believe Mars in the mid lane is wildly underrated. I really believe this. Reason being is Borg is one of the best level one spells in the game and it's not treated as so when it should be. Bulwark redirects when you activate it 70% of auto attacks. It also reduces damage by 40% even when it's not activated, right? it's the passive. On top of that, Mars has a range creep secure. You guys know mid laners, they generally need a range creep secure, otherwise they get put in really awkward positions. And so Mars covers that, he has good damage block, he has really high damage, an incredible animation, the ability to gank, he can flash farm pretty quickly with the soul ring or just the bottle, and so yeah, he just has a lot of qualities as a mid laner. But what makes him special? What is the build I recommend going on this hero? Well, at level one, if you are against a ranged hero and you don't think you need range creep secure, you can actually take Bulwark 
to grief their last hits. Because, let's say you're playing against Alina, and she throws an auto attack at a melee creep. You can activate Bulwark, and it will redirect the auto attack to your shield. It's really cool. And then they miss the CS, and then you turn it off, and you deny it. It's incredible. And this works against every single ranged hero in the game, right? It's, it's just how it goes. It redirects 70%. 70%? It's like having a 70% miss chance. Imagine if you... Like, you guys know how much you miss uphill mid lane, okay? Imagine that. Three times more likely, practically. Right? Three times! That's what playing against Mars mid, if they know what they're doing, is like. It is that good. And this hero is just tanky, right? So you can't actually bully him out of lane if he has bore. Like, only heroes like Viper can, right? In, in which case, okay, maybe you don't want to put Mars mid, <laughs> right? Make him an offlaner. But that's the, that's the reality here. On top of that, his ultimate is really good at ganking. As I said, he has good wave clear. And here's the build that you should go. Other than the skill build that I just mentioned, I'm a huge fan of all inning on minus armor and playing around your gods or beef. So you want to go phase boots to make sure you can chase people down, right? Your hero can get a little bit kited. However, I don't want you to go blink dagger. I don't think it's good to rush this item as a mid lane Mars. It's not terrible, but it's not the best. So I like bottle with phase boots, wand if it's a good wand game. Then you want to go into orb of corrosion. It allows you to gank much easier because you can chase people down and the armor reduction on your god's rebuke is incredible. It also gives you some really nice HP, so... It's just overall a perfect item on Mars in my opinion, very underrated. After that, you go into Deso, and yes, the armor reduction on Orb of Corrosion and Deso does stack. So all of a sudden, you hit someone with your W, if it's a support with like 9 or less armor, they just insta-die. I'm not kidding, your God's Rebuke will do more than half of their HP, and you're extremely tanky. After the Deso, you want to go BKB, after BKB you go Blink, sometimes you can go Blink before the BKB if you think they don't have proper magical damage to kill you, and you're just playing like high tempo pickoff playstyle, but if you're team fighting, BKB is an absolute necessity on this hero because you won't die to physical damage. You're going to die solely, almost solely, to magical damage because of Bulwark. And yeah, you're just going to see yourself popping off. This hero also has multiple talents to make God Rebuke even better, and it really does scale much better than you think, especially considering Satanic works with God's Rebuke. Getting into the third build of the video, and this is the build that Nine recently popularized in their recent EUTI qualifier. And this is the Witchblade Ags Wyvern. But I want to add a small spin. Nothing crazy, but but if you haven't played this build yet and you've kind of just dismissed it as a cheesy hero, it's not. It's actually the furthest thing from it. I genuinely believe heroes like Wyvern and Mars or even Grimstroke Offlane, as much as this is like fun builds to try when you're bored, I want to try to make something like fun builds you could try when you're bored in ranked, right? Like, let's say you, you queue into ranking, you know you're about to grief, like we all know we're going to do because we're in a really bad mood. These are heroes you can pick, like you're like, eh, I kind of want to grief, but I want to have a chance of winning the game perfect combo right perfect combo here and the wyvern okay now you have a 50 damage talent at level 10 okay your q is insane does nine percent of their their current health every second nasty right nasty has good wave shove not a great laner so i recommend trying to pick this hero if you have the opportunity i know it's hard but it's generally best if you can pick it into stuff like specter pa heroes that can't pressure you as much it's 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 much better or at least have your position for protect you the entire lane to the best of your ability. And then basically when you get a Witchblade, you can solo kill anyone. It's really that simple. A lot of people go Boots of Travel before the Witchblade, which I think is okay. I also think Orchid is actually still really good to rush. It gives you an insane amount of DPS and you already have a built-in slow. So as much as I do think that the Witchblade build is extremely good, I also highly recommend Orchid even after the Witchblade. It's a little bit risky and it does delay your Axe timing, but it lets you solo kill people. I'll probably make a full video on, on like the different times to go these different items at some point on, on this Wyvern core build, because I actually expect it to stay strong even after a potential patch, but we'll have to see. Then you buy an Axe. The Axe was massively buffed. When this Axe was first announced for Wyvern that he could constantly have Arctic Burn on, the problem was it costed way too much mana. Now it's only 20 mana a second. That's nothing. It's not, it's literally nothing. If you have a clarity on, you can just fly and it gives you bonus movement speed. So it's basically Dragonite Axe where you can fly over cliffs. You're basically unkillable. You're actually quite tanky because Wyvern has good strength gain and a health talent if you want it. And so people can't kill you and you can solo kill them in side lanes. And basically all you need to do in the late game when you get really farmed is fly around, shit people down in team fights, and then in the side lanes when the game statics out and people are just split pushing, curse them on a creep wave, hit them with the Bloodthorn, which I recommend to be your third item or fourth item, auto attack them and they will die. If you haven't seen the damage that this actually does, it's freaking insane. You will be shocked. Cores melt. Like a Sven will almost solo die, if not solo die to you when you have Witchblade Ags and, and a Bloodthorn. It is insane. Next up on the list is Spirit Breaker. But I know what you're thinking. Speed, is this just the Ags position four build? <laughs> yes, it is, except you're gonna be playing offlane. And yeah, it's actually just really good. The Ags on Spirit Breaker is deadly when you get it. 
just a lower cooldown charge that goes even faster. It seems really basic, and it is, but it does a ton of damage, and it's one of the most fun ags in the game. Also, this hero is a pretty good laner. Has really high armor, good HP regen, a lot of damage. Honestly, I think this hero is probably just a better off laner than a position four for the pure fact that, honestly, it's not great as a position four. Like, it kind of takes a little bit to come online and generally needs some items. So that's what an off laner does. It doesn't have to farm the whole game. Right, Spirit Breaker definitely doesn't want to do that because he has no way, no good way of showing waves, which is his biggest problem. But as long as you focus the early levels in lane, not on pressuring because you're not that good at it yet, but rather on CSing, and then you take various points in time to just like clear dangerous creep waves, you'll get your axe. Like get a couple pickoffs and then charge side lanes when there's no one there and farm the, the dead lane, you're going to get your axe at a good timing. Like you can literally get it 18, 19 minutes into the game. Other than that, the items I recommend you buy don't all in too much on small items. Try to get the axe as soon as possible. But I do think Fades, a Bracer, and a Wand is a great way to go just to make sure you can fight. And an Orb of Venom is nice as well, just to guarantee a couple of extra kills. But that's all for the offlane build. It's really good. Just charge the backline and you're going to kill them all. And finally, last but not least, I'm telling you. I know there's going to be some haters on this one, but it's Sniper. Okay, Sniper mid. Hear me out. Hear me out. I made a, I just made a full course for it on the website. So if you're interested in that, it, it's really in-depth. We, we talk about Tomato Sniper, but the shard is nuts. This is the biggest thing. Concussive Grenade is really, really good. It bumps back the enemy and you and disarms them for three seconds and does damage. It's really, really good. So the Sniper, this hero that typically would have had to spend, oh, I don't know, 2k gold on a four staff. Right, that wouldn't necessarily disarm them and push them further enough away. Right, wouldn't get you further enough away. Now you just spend fourteen hundred gold and buy four staff and buy blink dagger if you want it, which I show you the exact build you need to go on the website. And the cool thing about the concussive grenade is that because it launches you back and them back as well, it's like hurricane piking them, and you can have two of those if you want it. Right, and in the late game you do, and all of a sudden this hero, right, sniper that like you could easily close the gap on just because he'd have to four staff away and then you'd catch him. He has two of them, and it's much better than you would think. It's really actually hard to kill this hero, because Dragonlance gives you a lot of HP. It's kind of like Templar Assassin, right? You have a lot of HP, you stay really far back, and the typical way to counter Sniper or TA is to Jumper at the same time, right? These heroes don't have innate mobility, right? They get stuck, but it doesn't matter. They get really tanky, they buy these mobility items that just are in the game now, or shards that are in the game now, or ags that are in the game now. And all of a sudden, they're just really good. So here's the build you want to go. You want to go a Wraith Ban, into Treads, into Dragonlance, into Maelstrom, sometimes into Blink Dagger, sometimes into Mask of Madness. Mask of Madness if it's a super free sniper game. If it's not a super free sniper game, Blink Dagger is a good way to go. Then you buy the Shard. Then you're typically going to go BKB. After the BKB, you're going to go Mjolnir. Then you can go into a variety of items. It could be a Daedalus in the late game, MKB for Evasion, and so on. And yeah, that's going to be all for today's video. Let me know in the comments if you guys have different builds that I could try my pubs. I'm always looking for different things, fun builds to give a go. I'm really excited to see what you guys have to say in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.